Now there's a saying that in this life nothing comes for free, but in the case of this old advantage desktop tower, that isn't exactly true. This was about to be thrown away by its previous owner, as I quote, they'd had enough of it, and I didn't go any further into this. But is an old system like this worth fixing up or salvaging anyway? That is if it even works. And could we maybe turn it into something more by throwing a few upgrades at it if it does? Well today we're going to find out. My name's Andy and this is Andy's Tech. Now I have no idea what this system specs are or what's inside the case, but I do know this system's about 10-11 years old and the only other information I have is that the PC shuts off after about 20-30 seconds of use. So let's take the side panel off and have a look at what awaits us. Now straight up and probably the cause of the shutdowns is this PC is dusty, very dusty. In fact I don't think I've seen a PC this dusty before. The CPU is totally clogged and choked with dust. It does though look like we have some usable components in the system. But before we take a closer look and try to boot this thing up, let's get it outside and clean it out first. Okay, so she's a little fresher now, and we won't contract some 18th century lung disease from getting too close. So let's check out what we've got to work with in our little freebie advantage tower. Now on first glance, it doesn't look too bad at all. We have an ASUS N68C-S motherboard that supports AM2 Plus and AM3 processors, and up to DDR3 1600MHz. The board does also support overclocking, which is nice to know as well, as that will come in useful later. I'm praying we don't have a Sempron under that cooler, as that would not be good, but something with a couple of cores would be nice. But first, before we check that out, we've got two 2GB sticks of DDR2 800MHz RAM, a 400 watt 80 plus power supply, and although I've not heard of the brand, it looks sturdy enough for our purposes here. There's a Western Digital Blue 500GB hard drive as well, which is really nice to find, and an old IDE DVD drive, which is just no use to anyone these days other than a doorstop. One major problem I can see with this system is that there's no front or rear fan to help with ventilation, and that's something we'll need to address. But now, for the moment I've been waiting for, the make or break, let's get the CPU cooler off and have a look at what lies beneath. Ah, okay, not bad. It's not a Sempron at least. We have a little 2-core Athlon X2 250. Not amazing, but better than nothing. It's getting on a bit now and was released in 2009, but I was told this system was about 11 years old, so that fits the bill. With a frequency of 3 GHz and based on the 45 nanometer process with a TDP of 65 watts, it does have a lock multiplier unfortunately, which will limit what we can do overclocking wise, but we'll see what we can do, if it works that is, so fingers crossed. We'll also be running the GeForce 7020 integrated graphics with this system, running through the VGA port. Uh, it's pretty terrible. This was in fact my reaction upon seeing the tech power up page. Ooh, 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 ooh. Uh, like imagine a GT210 and make it about 10 times worse. I've had driver issues as well uh, with these integrated graphics in Windows 10, uh, but we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. Okay, so before we boot this up, I'm going to tidy up the case a little, get the CPU repasted, and just double check everything to make sure it all looks in order. And then we'll give the system a whirl.
So the PC cleaned up nicely, and with some cable management she's looking better than new. Not bad anyway for some junk someone was going to throw away. It did fire up first time, and booted to a fresh install of Windows 10, but we weren't without our problems. The PC worked fine on the Microsoft Display Adapter, and I managed to install all the games and programs etc that I needed. But as soon as I installed the graphics driver, the fun and game started, uh, which just culminated in blue screen after blue screen. This could easily be solved by just sticking in any old GPU for a display out, and then someone would have a perfectly serviceable little PC for general tasks. But where's the fun in that? No, what if we put in a GTX 750 Ti, 8GB of DDR3, and overclocked our little Athlon? Could we play any games? Well let's find out. Okay, so we tested out some easy to run games, and it was a bit of a shit show really. The CPU was just pegged at 100%, even with a 3.6GHz overclock. The 750Ti barely stretched its legs, and was just being held back by the little Athlon. Valorant was plagued with freezes and stutters. League of Legends was actually playable with about a 70fps average and ok 1% lows. CSGO was again playable for a bit of fun really but you'd just get your ass handed to you at 30 fps. I also had no end of problems trying to get the 750Ti to work in the system and boot into Windows. I had to disconnect the hard drive every time to be able to boot into the BIOS as well, which was just a pain. I still don't understand why that was the case. Uh, so really, what have we learned from our little free PC? Well, not much really. These old dual cores are definitely getting to the end of their usable life. As a basic office PC it was just about usable, I mean you could maybe upgrade the CPU to a 4 core Athlon, but is that even worth it in the long run? The main point though is it's just a good bit of fun playing with these old systems and seeing what they can still do, even if that is not a lot. So thank you for watching the video, please leave a like or a comment down below, I love what you guys have to say. And thank you to my 380 subscribers, and please consider joining them if you want to see more content like this. God bless as always, and hopefully see you in the next one. Take care.